My doctor was like, what's more important, the animals or your health? Here's the great thing, it's not an either or. Welcome back to another video. So today we're responding to Cheyenne from Shy Curves. She has a channel here on YouTube with about 110,000 subscribers. She's a beauty, lifestyle, uh, fashion channel. And about two months ago, she made a video saying she was going vegan. And then about a week ago, she put out a green smoothie recipe video, including dairy milk and yogurt. And there was a lot of backlash. And so she's since made a video saying why I'm no longer vegan. So we've had a heap of requests to respond to this video, particularly because Cheyenne also has PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, which a lot of our viewers also have and have asked us, can they be vegan and what diet should they eat? So we've taken her video, we've cut it up and rearranged it a little bit so that we can respond to it in a more fluid manner. Anyways, today I want to talk to you guys about something, um, the vegan thing, because that has been just like the most popular topic ever on my channel currently. So let's talk to you guys like one-on-one, -on -one, just kind of explain things because a lot of people are like getting very butthurt and going insane, so. Cheyenne was never vegan to begin with. She was simply attempting a plant-based diet. And veganism is not simply a thing. It is a stance against violence. And it's not something that you turn on and off. Once you've made the true ethical connection, you are vegan for life. And it's popular and has exploded on your channel at the moment because people actually care. They give a shit about your health, about animals and the planet. And this is the important thing. You know, the makeup, the hairstyles, the outfit of the day, that's not so important compared to the big things. You are vegan, that is great for you. I know it is a very hard lifestyle um, and you have to be very dedicated and have lots of willpower and just be very focused. So I applaud you for that. So right off the bat, it's clear that Cheyenne hadn't received the proper education to help her make the real connection and that she probably wasn't eating sufficiently because once you're eating enough calories from the right sources, veganism is not hard, you don't have to be dedicated and you don't need willpower. You just need to know exactly why you're doing it and you need to put the right things into your body. Super easy. So, Cheyenne said she got her period around nine or 10 years old. She was very young and it was never regular, um, but this ran in her family and she didn't really think much of it. Fast forward to like this year, um, my period just got even more irregular. It was going all wonky. It was just not a good time. So fast forward to when I went vegan, it completely stopped altogether and I didn't get a period. And I was like, this is very weird. So anyways, my doctor wanted me to do a bunch of tests and we did the tests. I had an ultrasound and all that kind of stuff. And I got diagnosed with PCOS. So if you guys don't know what PCOS is, it's polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, essentially, I have a bunch of cysts on my ovaries. Now, we don't know what you were eating or how much you were eating when you were eating plant-based, but what we do know is that the reason why people who lose their period when coming to a vegan diet is because they're simply not eating enough calories. Also, period loss is a symptom of PCOS, and your PCOS existed before you attempted a plant-based diet. You didn't just develop those cysts in the few weeks you were eating plants. The doctor sat down with me and it was nothing I did. PCOS is one of those things that you're pretty much predisposed to have if you're gonna have it. So it was in my, you know, my genetic code, if you will, to have this. It wasn't something environmental or something that I did to cause this, as well as it can be genetic. So my, my family on my mom's side does have a history of PCOS. It wasn't something I did. It's just something that I was born with technically. This is where we get really frustrated with the medical system because it disempowers people. It says, oh, it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. It just runs in your family. It's your genes. But the truth is that the majority of these diseases that we're told are genetic are actually only activated through our dietary and lifestyle choices. When we say it runs in my family, what that means is all the legs of the family members are under the same table. We're all eating the same thing within a family. Meat, dairy, and eggs run in our families. And it's those foods that activate the genes that cause disease. So it's not your fault because kids are simply taught how to eat from their parents. 
and we see the same things being passed down generation to generation, including the same diseases, the same body types, the same outcomes. So it's not your fault and yet at this point you do need to take responsibility and listen and learn and change your actions. So let's hear more about genes from Dr. Neil Barnard. But this is an important thing to remember. Genes are in two categories. Certain genes are dictators. I'm talking about the genes that say blue eyes or brown hair. They are dictators, they give orders, you can't argue. But the genes for diabetes are committees. They're making suggestions. And you could say, well, wait a minute. I don't really think I want to have diabetes. And in fact, most disease genes, whether it's for heart disease or diabetes or hypertension, certain forms of cancer, even Alzheimer's disease, they're not dictators, they're committees. And they are, their activity depends on what we put into our bodies. So what I'm saying is that we're putting into our bodies foods that we're really not designed for. I didn't consult my doctor before going vegan, and um, I was nutrient deficient, and it was not good. My doctor wanted me to go to the hospital. I was not anemic or anything, but I was nutrient deficient. That's why I had zero energy. I had big black bags under my eyes, and I was just like not feeling okay. So what exactly were you eating and how much? We don't know. We would love to see your food diary during this time and we could tell you instantly why you were feeling not so great. But what we do know is people become nutrient deficient on a plant-based diet when they don't eat enough calories of the right foods. And plant foods are more nutrient dense than animal products. So it would be very hard to develop a nutrient deficiency on a plant-based diet if you were eating enough calories from whole plant foods. And therefore, in all likelihood, you were nutrient deficient before attempting a plant-based diet. And the only reason you felt better is because you were probably eating more calories from animal products, and because calories equals energy, you felt better. My doctor highly did not recommend it, not due to just the vegan lifestyle, but due to the fact that I have not only PCOS, I have irritable bowel syndrome. I have sensitivity and allergies to certain foods that are kind of the main food groups in a vegan diet that was preventing me from getting proper nutrients. I am restricted and very limited in the choices I have if I were to eat a vegan diet and I was nutrient deficient because of these restrictions that I had. In order to objectively determine whether you're allergic to a particular plant food or not, you first have to eliminate all animal products. And that's because we're not designed to eat them. We're herbivores, not omnivores. And by doing so, you will lighten the load on your immune system and you might find that you're actually able to tolerate certain plant foods that you previously thought you were allergic to. And as Dr. John McDougall says, most people will resolve their food allergies by simply adopting a starch-based diet. In terms of IBS, there are studies linking IBS with the consumption of dairy. And again, as Dr. John McDougall says, most people with IBS improve as soon as they begin to eat a starch-based diet. And from personal experience, I had IBS. I suffered terribly, and it was always triggered with dairy, specifically milk. So what are Cheyenne's sensitivities and allergies? I have a very bad soy sensitivity, so anything soy I can't have. I do have irritable bowel, so there are just like a list of things I can eat, and that's where I would get most of my protein from, and I also have a, a nut um, allergy, so just all of these like beans and nuts and all these types of things where I would get my, my protein from, most of them I can't eat. So when I'm trying to have a high protein diet for my PCOS, but can't eat high protein on a vegan diet, you see how the two would clash, so. We'll get to why the whole premise of prescribing a high protein diet to treat PCOS is wrong in a moment, but let's just start by saying that doctors receive very little nutritional education, if any at all, during their entire medical degrees. So they don't know how to prescribe nutrition, they only know how to prescribe drugs. In fact, your doctor has so little clue as to what you should be eating that he basically pulled out the 
protein though argument against veganism. The fact of the matter is that our protein requirements are much less than we think they are. In fact, the World Health Organization recommends getting 5 to 8% of our total daily calories from protein. That's hardly any at all. And in fact, all whole plant foods contain around 5 to 8% protein. So unless you're planning to be a bodybuilder, you don't need more than that. Now in terms of the foods that Cheyenne lists, we don't eat nuts at all. Uh, we rarely have soy, only if we go out. And beans and lentils, sure, they're healthy, but you don't need them to be vegan. You can get enough protein from any plant foods. You can have a diet of mangoes and lettuce. As long as you're eating enough calories, you will get enough protein. I have consulted with my doctor and we have a, <clears throat> a meal plan because there is a certain diet that people with PCOS have to follow. It is very high protein, low sugar. Yes, there is a certain diet for people with PCOS and it is not what your doctor has recommended. On a non-vegan diet, high protein also means high fat because you're getting your protein from animal products and animal products are made up of protein and fat, not carbs. So your doctor has you on a diet of dead animals and their secretions. And this is what you've always eaten, Cheyenne, what your family has always eaten and what everybody eats. And it's these foods that have got you into the situation of being obese and having PCOS. Basically, he hasn't changed anything. And if you don't change anything, nothing changes. So PCOS is tightly related to metabolic issues like insulin resistance, glucose intolerance and obesity. The reason why your doctor has prescribed a high protein diet is because he falsely believes that carbohydrates cause insulin resistance. And this is the exact same thinking that most doctors have when they're treating diabetes. And yet Dr. Neil Barnard is actually preventing and reversing diabetes with the exact opposite diet, a low protein, a low fat, a high carbohydrate, whole plant foods, vegan diet. So let's hear from Dr. Michael Greger of nutritionfacts.org who specializes in clinical nutrition, what causes insulin resistance. One hit of fat can start causing insulin resistance, inhibiting glucose uptake after just 160 minutes. And then you can do the opposite experiment. Lower the level of fat in people's blood, and the insulin resistance comes right down. Clear the fat out of the blood, and you can clear the sugar out of the blood. So that explains this finding. On a high-fat, ketogenic diet, insulin doesn't work very well. Our bodies become insulin resistant. But as the amount of fat in our diet gets lower and lower, insulin works better and better. This is a clear demonstration that the sugar tolerance of even healthy individuals can be impaired by administering a low-carb, high-fat diet. But we can decrease insulin resistance by decreasing fat intake. And in terms of obesity and PCOS, Dr. John McDougall says, weight loss will correct PCOS, and the most effective way to permanently lose weight is to change the composition of the diet to low-fat plant foods and add regular exercise. What's not going to help your obesity and therefore your PCOS is eating high-fat, high-protein animal products, like this chicken here on your Instagram. What does science tell us about chicken consumption? Chicken consumption was most associated with weight gain in both women and men, and it didn't take much. And compared to those who didn't eat any chicken at all, those eating about 20 or more grams of chicken a day had a significantly greater increase in their body mass index. That's around one chicken nugget, or, or a single chicken breast once every two weeks, compared to no chicken at all. We also know that PCOS is a disorder involving excessive hormone production by the ovaries and the adrenal glands. In your green smoothie video, you use dairy milk and yogurt. What you may not be aware of is that dairy contains over 60 naturally occurring hormones. So when we put the hormones of another animal into our body, that screws up our hormones. It is the last thing that's going to help somebody with a hormonal imbalance. Also, dairy is baby cow growth formula. It's designed to make a baby cow grow about 10 times its size in its first year. Now you have PCOS, which is linked to obesity, so you need to lose weight. Why would you drink something that is designed to make someone grow? 
There are plenty of plant-based alternatives for dairy that are not going to cause the same hormonal damage that drinking cow's milk will. From an ethical perspective, you were caught out in your smoothie video, as this viewer has pointed out, in your original video you said that these cows go through hell and it's just not okay how we get our milk. And yet here you are, drinking milk with a smile on your face, promoting it to your audience. And it was a little ironic that you said that vegan viewers were getting butt hurt, when in actual fact, dairy cows to be raped actually have a fist shoved into their anus and they're the ones that are butt hurt. In summary, what does someone with PCOS need to eat? As Dr. Neil Barnard says in this interview, a low fat plant-based diet. A plant-based diet is the best option for women with PCOS. There are uh, a lot of things that are behind the scenes when it comes to people's lives in general, but mine in particular. Um, you have no idea the conversations I have had with my doctor. Like, you were not there. You don't know my entire medical history. You don't know my allergies and sensitivities. And All right, Cheyenne, a little bit of tough love is needed here. We have to say that you are not unique in any way. Your story and situation is the same as everybody else's. We've heard this time and time and time again. People think that they're different, that they're somehow their story is different. It's not. Just replace your disease, PCOS, with another name and it's the same thing. And that's because we all come from the same species. So we all suffer from the same kind of diseases and they're mostly caused by the same things. 14 out of the 15 leading causes of our death have been scientifically linked to eating animal foods. It's one diet for all diseases because it's a species specific diet. Just like all lions eat one diet, all elephants eat one diet, all humans eat one diet. And we're supposed to eat a plant-based diet that is predominantly focused on whole foods, that is low in fat. This is the baseline for health. It can only help your condition, no matter what your disease is. Simply change PCOS for Candida and our stories are actually the same. I suffered from chronic Candida for seven years and it nearly destroyed my health and it consumed our lives and our marriage. All the doctors I saw said exactly the same thing. They just prescribed drugs. They had no idea what the root cause was. It was only once I took control into my hands and did the research that I discovered what was causing it and it was diet related. Where did I find the answer? On a vegan YouTube channel. So basically you have to start following the people that are getting the results that you want and start listening to plant-based doctors. And there are plenty of testimonials and examples for you to follow online of people who have corrected, improved or healed their PCOS with a plant-based diet. Do I want to be on supplements like for the rest of my life or do I want to go back to a animal-based diet like that's kind of the options my doctor gave me no you don't have to choose between those two options because if you eat enough calories from a whole foods plant-based diet you will not be deficient you will not need supplements the only thing you need is b12 and that's not even just for vegans that is for everybody but for right now, I just need to get comfortable in having this disease and it's something I have to get used to because I will have to start hormone therapy. Um, I will be on medication for it um, and I just need to get comfortable with that. So you weren't prepared to take supplements, but you're prepared to take medication and undergo hormone therapy? Never ever get comfortable with a disease. If your doctor won't work with you and support you on a plant-based diet, then you need to find one who will. My doctor was like, what's more important, the animals or your health? Here's the great thing, it's not an either or. By fixing your health, you will be saving animals. Unintentionally, your doctor is actually killing you because 14 of the 15 leading causes of our death have scientifically been linked to eating animal products. Your obesity is going to get worse and your PCOS is going to get worse if you follow this doctor's advice. It's now time to start thinking critically because your life, the animal's lives, is literally in your hands. All the links for everything we've referenced today are down below. We strongly suggest you continue doing your research. And again, as we said before, find a doctor who will work with you on a plant-based diet. The evidence is very clear. Thanks for watching, guys. Help us share this message with Cheyenne. Her social media links are linked below. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember, until next time, going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do for our health, for the animals, and the planet. See you next video. Bye, guys.
<laughs> Welcome, guys. Welcome to our very first mukbang, mukbang. Whatever it's called. We're eating. Grab your food and eat with us. 